Hello Nuggets. Uh, okay, so I wanted to make a little video today um, about some of the stuff that's been going on, or a specific thing that's been going on during the uh, quarantine for us. Um, are we still in quarantine? I don't know whether, I, I can't tell whether we are or not. I mean, obviously we're still suffering the, uh, the pandemic. I, I know that COVID-19 is still going on. But are we under quarantine? Because it kind of doesn't, it feels like we're just wearing masks now. You know, not some of us. Um, anyway, but I wanted to talk a little bit about what's been going on uh, with us, as in me and Laura. So we're running out of money. Um, and we have a very nice house. Um, well, it's just a normal house, actually, but it's in L.A., which makes it very nice. So um, we have to start making some decisions. We're both in our 50s. And... Um, you know, so Laura's an actor, so the work is erratic. Sometimes it comes, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, I'm a contract writer now, which means the work is erratic. Sometimes it comes and sometimes it doesn't. And uh, we have some choices to make about where we want to go as, we, as we're as we now, you know, valid for AARP membership, almost. Um, and I get a lot of, <laughs> I get a lot of mail tell, reminding me how old I am now fucking sucks anyway but we have to make some decisions about what we're going to do in the second part of our life actually you know because of my health the last third of our lives of my life you know having a mortgage in LA it's really expensive I mean it's it basically dominates every decision that we make every decision we make is based on well can we pay the mortgage most of those decisions are no we can't <laughs> right because so when i'm working in the game industry when i used to work in the game industry, i still do work in it but when i was in a studio in the game industry uh, usually the pay is about enough to cover the mortgage and a little bit more right now when i got there were some times during that my work when i like worked on Call of Duty at Treyarch and stuff like that where I would get really big bonus checks and that allowed us to do you know allowed us to actually purchase the house in the first place so it gave us the down payment we took an awesome vacation we did some really cool stuff but you know money throughout life goes up and down and we're definitely in a down and um, with a high mortgage me earning money in an industry that it's a little hard to get a job when you're 50, to be honest with you. I don't think there's any, it's necessarily age restricted because there are plenty of people in the industry who are my age and older. But it is a little harder, I'm not going to lie, because, you know, people in their 20s and 30s have usually come up through college and they're trained. I'm not trained. I left school when I was 15. Um, I mean, officially, when I was 15, I really left it when I was 14, but... I don't have any training, it's just self-taught, right? Well, that's not good enough anymore. It's just not. The games are too complex, the software system's too complex, and I'm smart and I can pick stuff up, but I can't perform at the level I need to. When I was working at Naughty Dog, I actually learned this at Naughty Dog. This was really the place that kind of taught me that I had this issue. The guy sitting behind me, a guy called Kurt, nice guy, um, very smart, uh, and maybe I shouldn't be comparing myself to Kurt because he ended up being the lead designer there. But still, he was sitting behind me. He was young. His knowledge, based on his education and you know, and natural talent, but also just where he came from, really put a spotlight on the fact. Like, shit, I can't do that. I don't have a degree in computer science. There was another guy, lovely guy, Peter um, Peter Javipur, who sat across from me. And then there was Brian Singh. There was all of these people at Naughty Dog in particular. Um, who were just exceptional, uh, who, you know, it wasn't so much that they're great designers, they are great designers, but that wasn't what set them apart. It was the ability, there was no barrier between their idea and the implementation. There was no struggle for them, or if there was, they hid it very well. Because they'd been trained, they'd been working in computers all their life. This was just very natural for them, you know. This was just something that they, they dedicated themselves to when they were young, they learned it. They nailed it. They got their degrees in computer science and then they went into the game industry. And when someone says you need to script this system or you need to program this, it's intuitive to them. It's a language. It's just translation to them. It's not for me. Every line was a struggle. Every time I leave 
a scripting engine or a game engine, I'm losing, I'm losing my ability. I have to go back to it six months later and I'm like, oh, where was I? How the hell do I do this? Um, and I know everyone gets that to some extent. It just gets a lot harder as you get older, to be honest with you. And, you know, it's not that the, the, there's no age issue in the industry that I know of, but I mean, I've never felt that. Um, I'm just not as good. It's the truth. I'm just not as good, you know. And a lot of the things that I had going through for me in my career, um, which is that I'm a good leader, um, and I think people like working with me because I like working with people. Like I think it was an enjoyable experience. Those are just not as relevant anymore. It just doesn't matter, you know. Um, so the end result is I can't really get a job that pays a lot of money. So now I'm sitting here thinking, okay, what do I do in my 50s? What the hell do I do in my 50s? So I turned to writing and I picked up some contract jobs and, you know, I did Doom and I did, um, I'm working on GTFO this, this, with this awesome guys from Sweden. Um, and both of those jobs I really enjoyed and a couple of other bits and pieces, but I really enjoyed the work, but it's very erratic. Never know when it's coming in. And if I'm going to be honest, it isn't very fulfilling. It's just not very fulfilling, writing bits and pieces every so often. You know, it's like, and it's also part of the lifestyle that led me to this, right? To, you know, turning 50 this year and being aware I'm in the home stretch now, you know, because of choices I've made. Um, and it's just another choice that's in that long line of choices, right? It's just another sitting behind the desk, not doing it, having no energy, not doing what you need to do to, to improve the quality of your life. So the end result is we have to make some choices now about what to do. So we've been looking around to see what would happen if we sold this house. We've got money in the house. We still have a mortgage, obviously, but we have money in this house. We could probably walk away from here with a decent amount of money that in a lot of places would buy a house outright, which is... Um, a goal of mine. I, it's a dream of mine, to be honest. I just want to be able to own a house outright. That's all I just want to own a house outright. Some people just want a meal. <laughs> Jesus. Um, so from my position of privilege, I just want to own a house outright. Right? I just want to not have the mortgage. I know you still have taxes. And if you're an HOA, you still have an HOA, which, fuck that. Um, I would just like to know that whatever happens, this is my land. This is my peace. You know, I always have a roof over head. And in order to do that, in order to meet that goal, I would need to find a house in a place that I can buy outright with the proceeds from selling this house. And that's a little limited, actually. It's certainly not California. <laughs> it's not California, man. So we started looking further afield. So we've been looking in places like New Mexico, in Arizona. Uh, I looked a little bit in Oregon, but Oregon's expensive, but I do love Oregon. But um, we looked in Costa Rica. Uh, we looked a little in Mexico, but I don't know. Mexico's a lot of problems. I'm really tempted by Costa Rica. But the problem is we now have to decide, Laura and I, what word we attach to this change. Because Laura sees it as retirement. And she's like, I'm not ready to retire. I don't want to retire. I also see it as retirement. But I think my definition of retirement is different. To me, retirement is to continue doing exactly whatever the hell you want to do with the difference being you're not doing it for money. It's not the rat race. You're doing it because you want to do it, right? Like someone who goes and works like 60, 70 years old who goes and works at Home Depot <laughs> um, because they want to keep busy um, and they just don't want to just sit home and do nothing, that person's still retired. They're making that choice because they just want to work, you know, but not because they have to. We're in the rat race still, and I want out. That's the difference. Um, and Laura doesn't. So it's been a struggle. We're trying to figure out how the hell we get maneuver through this, you know. I have looked at places in Joshua Tree. When I said nowhere in California, there are places in Joshua Tree. I love the desert. It's my spiritual home. I love, I just love the desert. I like desert people. They're weird and odd, but I don't know. There's something about the desert that I just find fascinating. Um maybe romanticized maybe if we actually lived there i would realize what the fuck i need to get i need people what's going on but i don't know we spent a year in quarantine and 
It's been fine. <laughs> Hasn't worried me at all. You know, I mean, the only thing it's made me realize is um, the world has changed and, and we're in ground zero for the shitstorm. Like, I just want to be further away from people, to be honest with you. And I think it might get really bad. I mean, maybe I'm, I don't want to sound like I'm a panicker or a prepper, but I'm just worried it might get really bad. <laughs> no matter what happens. I'm not talking about January or, or November. Just whatever happens. I just worry it's going to get really bad. And I don't know if I want to be in LA or any big city when it happens. I don't want to take for the hills. I just like, you know, I'd prefer that life. We were watching a TV show. I can't remember what it was, but we were watching some British TV show. Oh, Last Tango in Halifax. We started watching that. It's good. We kind of stopped halfway through the first episode. But the point is it's an image of admittedly idyllic English country life. You know, that's not what most people's experience of it is. But the fact that these people were living in the country and the simplicity of their lives where it was just smaller it was just a small group of people it was just the experience was everything within that small circle um and they weren't comparing it's not comparing but every day it's just live your existence live your best existence with what you have um that just really appeals to me and i don't feel i have that here in la much as i do love la i think it's one of the great cities if you, if you need to live in a busy metropolis city, LA's fucking awesome, man. It's expensive, but it's awesome. But everyone compares themselves to everyone else. You're constantly reminded of what a failure you are, even when you're not a failure. I mean, that's this city's built on that. I'm telling people, you got to do better. You want to be a star. You got to do better. It's just like that's what everything, that's everything here is keeping up with the Joneses, you know. It's why people like Perez Hilton have careers. I just read a story about it today. I can't stand that fucking parasite. But people like that have careers because of the nature of this city, of this Babylon. And I just want out of it. I just, I don't want that anymore. I want a smaller life. I want to meet a small group and engage with them on local politics, on local ideals, not on these global bullshit about what Trump is doing or what biden's gonna do or any of that stuff i just want to be more local right it's very hard to do that in la because local is i mean i have my city here but it's not the same it's not the same um and maybe i'm thinking of geographics that you know there's a saying they have i think in the program that says geographics don't work in other words moving to fix your problem doesn't fix your problem i don't believe that <laughs> the stimulus for great change in my life has always been moving i mean i emigrated i came to america and i love america i'm an american citizen that was a huge, it, it, that was a, uh, a huge change in my life that just came out of nowhere, you know, like, scam great, you know, didn't work so great for my ex-wife. But, um, <laughs> um, yeah, I think moving is actually a, is a, is a good thing, you know. So we've been looking at, like I said, we're looking at New Mexico. I think New Mexico's definitely a possibility um i really like new mexico actually i think it's beautiful santa fe is beautiful um not sure about albuquerque we took a trip there for a job that laura had um, or for a, a meeting that laura had it was okay you know it's okay not quite the same but i did love santa fe and just in general new mexico is beautiful i like the people in new mexico it's kind of cool it's very arty lots of artistic culture there um Arizona, we went to Arizona, we looked at some houses in Arizona, in Phoenix. Fuck me, Phoenix is hot. That's insanely hot. Um, it was 115, I think, 116. You can only stand outside for three or four minutes. I mean, really, three or four minutes, and then you have to go inside. Um, my issue was that it was a bit redneck. I was kind of surprised. Like, I mean, I knew it was it was a little bit redneck. I didn't think Arizona was quite that. I mean, it's a lot of you know, lifted trucks and shotguns and, you know, beer cans crunched and thrown, squashed and thrown out windows. I mean, it's fucking, it's a little intense, uh, Arizona, um, probably from the heat. I don't know. But we saw some beautiful houses out there and I'm interested in anything. I really am interested in anything, any kind of change. Uh, the mother-in-law, my mother-in-law, 
um, Vicky and her boyfriend Jerry are moving to Colorado. They currently are in San Diego, or just outside San Diego. They're moving to Colorado Springs, which looks beautiful. Very interested in that. You know, uh, I like Colorado. I like the idea of Colorado. I like Coloradans. And I'd like to be close to family as well, so that would be nice. Um, but anyway, that's where we're at. I'm rambling now. Because I know what we're going to do. I feel like we're near the end. I feel we're near a position point where we're going to have to make a decision. And oh, the other thing I didn't mention is the other reason I really want to sell the house and move is because I think the housing market is going to collapse. And I think this is one of those situations, and I'm not great with money. I'm, a, I'm actually good with money. I don't know a lot about it, but I'm very thrifty, and I'm, I, I tend to have good instincts on what not to do. And to me, what I'm being told, my instincts are telling me what not to do is not take advantage of the fact that the market is up right now. Because I think that the economic repercussions of COVID are going to hit us extremely hard next year. And it might be the end of the next year. And we're all going to forget about it because the, the economy is going to keep bouncing back a little bit. And if Trump gets in, it will bounce up. And if Biden gets in, it might take a dip, but it will come back up. And, and there'll be that bullish attitude towards we can make it work and things will be all right. We'll make it. We'll, we'll, we'll see ourselves through this issue. And underneath all of that is the fucking chaos caused by shutting the country down for six months. Like that didn't happen. I, th I feel like we're thinking that we can just get over that massive debt and those massive problems, and we really can't. And I think the housing market is going to collapse. So I think now we should sell. In fact, what I feel we should do is we should sell, put the money in the bank, rent somewhere for six months, and then buy. But Laura disagrees with me on that. We have a, That's another issue we have to sort out. Um, but we'll say anyway, that's why, that's one of the, another reason, apart from feeling like I need, we need to, downsize our life is also that I feel that the housing market is going to crash and I don't want to lose the equity we have in this house because we have a lot in it you know anyway that's it you have any thoughts I'd love to hear them I miss country life I, I miss just being out in the sticks I miss nature I miss waking up in the morning and seeing a sea I miss seasons that's the other thing is I love California I love the sun but I really miss seasons <laughs> Time just disappears on you in, in LA, man. Because, you know, it's, uh, where are we now? It's October the 6th. Today it's going to be, I think, 91. That's fucking crazy, man. If you're not, free, when you're from here, you just take it for granted. When you're not from here, you're like, holy shit, dude. Is it just summer all the time? Yeah, pretty much. Which, uh, and I miss the snow. I'd like a white Christmas. I'd like, I'd like to see leaves changing color, you know. It is nice out in the desert. I do like the seasons in the desert because you feel that change. It's different out there. you know. Anyway, all right, I'm rambling. That was it. I want to put a video up just talking about moving house. If anyone has any thoughts, I really would love to hear them. Hear them. You know, places to live. I'm really interested in where to live. I have a friend who's looking at Canada. Canada might be a bit too cold for me, but I love Canada. I've been to Canada twice and fucking love Canadians and I love the country. So, you know, uh, I've got national health care, which is what we should have ridiculous that we don't so i don't know costa rica did love costa rica but we need to experiment with costa rica because i don't know i mean i'm fully aware that it might just have been vacation being enamored with it vacation but it was surprising to me i mean we've been to france spain italy lots of different places and i love all of them i've been dozens of countries and i loved all of them Costa Rica was a genuine, it was a feeling that I got similar to the feeling when I first came to America of like, oh, I could live here. And then I did. And it worked out well in America. So maybe that's what I'm thinking. But I got to go back to Costa Rica and check it isn't just, you know, uh, vacation. What do they call that as a word for it? Vacation bias, whatever. All right, you little nuggets. If you have any thoughts, let me know. Other than that, um, stay healthy. Mask on. Bye.